<laughs> hey everyone, so today we're going to be working on this Happy Good Vibrations. So it's a pretty modern bike from what I understand. We don't have too many of the Huffy and Schwinn cruisers, so it's pretty cool when one pops up. This one, <laughs> it's seen better days, but it's certainly far away from the end of its life. It's got rusty spokes on it, and its its welds are pretty, pretty disgusting. And somehow it has this dent in the head tube, but I'm thinking that it was there like in manufacturing and then they just assembled it anyway because I don't know how a dent would happen with the bearing cup in place. But yeah, it comes with 26 inch wheels from factory and a coaster brake as well. So clunking is really all about just taking some weird junky old bike and taking it downhill. Um, there's a, quite a bit of history involved with it, but um, you can check that out. Just Google search clunkers and yeah, there's quite a few YouTube videos and stuff. So these do come with American bottom brackets, which is a bit of a <laughs> bit of a nuisance because they come with one piece cranks. But this one comes with a 25.4 seat post, which is pretty cool. And you can see the crusty old spokes there. But a lot of the old Schwinn and Huffy Cruisers came with 22.2 seat posts, um, which I've bent a few of them before. So you can get solid 22.2 seat posts, but having a 25.4 is a bit sturdier. These back sweat handlebars are going to go as well. I've got a few upgrades for the bike. We're going to be changing that bottom bracket to a more common one with a bottom bracket adapter. Going to be getting rid of the fenders and stuff and changing these handlebars. Not only are they a bit too low and back swept for me, but yeah, they're just going to get in my way. <laughs> my way if I take them off-road. We'll get rid of the stand as well. Um, it's kind of handy to have for a cruiser bike, but when you're riding off-road and bashing around and stuff, you don't need one. Just It's going to get in the way. I've had them sort of dip down and fall and sort of get stuck there um, before. I'm just kind of a nuisance. In this video, we're going to be testing out these new Vera or Vera tools. These are the um, hex plus systems and they have like this little ball to to keep the bolt secured to the key so i've gone through and sprayed wd-40 on all the bolts and stuff that we're going to be removing today but luckily it doesn't look like anything is really seized in there so the stem came out pretty good <laughs> the headset lock nut was actually pretty much loose axle nuts came undone quite easily and then also the fenders, they came off pretty well. So these might come in handy for another bike. So we're going to keep all the hardware and everything, keep that together. We don't need fenders on this bike. Um, we're going to be riding it off-road and stuff, and we don't want mud to clog up in the fenders. Taking the rear wheel off, make sure that you do the coaster brake arm as well. Otherwise the wheel is just going to dangle there. So the tyres that we're going to be using on the bike, uh, it's not really my favourite tyre, but we've got something pretty aggressive for it. Um, Maxxis, or Maxxis, DHR and DHF. So I'm just using these because I had them sitting around. Most of the parts that we'll be using on the bike are going to be just out of my parts bin. Um, apart from the bottom bracket adapter, because it's not something that I have for most of my bikes. So because this bike has the huge American bottom bracket and one piece cranks, we're going to be converting it to a threaded system. So we can just use our regular three piece cranks and sealed bottom bracket. That's mostly so they can be a bit sturdier than the one piece ones. These end up twisting and uh, they're just, they're not very good, <laughs> not very good cranks. I don't like one piece cranks. Um, it would be really cool to put on some BMX cranks with like a 19mm spindle. Uh, the, I really like the look of that, but that's not coming up at this point in time. I would also like to do a different fork on it, but it's kind of hard to find something that ships from normally from the United States into New Zealand. Um, I've checked through eBay and stuff, and a lot of the places 
if they do ship it's very very expensive so it's not really worth it i was trying to find a straight fork for the bike but it's not on the cards at this point in time but i'll keep an eye out for something local you never know what's going to show up so this is the one piece crank and american bottom bracket system these undo from the non-drive side and you basically just undo it uh, these are reverse threads as well so and then once you undo all that and pull the bob uh, bearing out and stuff you just sort of twist it around and pull it out it sort of only comes out one way because um, the frame gets in the way and then these cups you can just bash out So there's a group ride planned for um, a Wednesday evening. So that's what I'll be getting the bike ready for. So to get it all looking nicely and how I want it in that shorter time frame, we're going to be using some, like a rust solution, I guess you'd call it, to rust the bike up within a couple of days. So I'll leave a link to the video that I used the solution in in the description. But it's a solution by Loco Joe, and he did a whole video about the process and everything that's involved in adding patina to a bike. It's a really helpful video, so if you want some patina on one of your bikes, check it out. I'll put his video in the description below. So the bike has very minimal patina. Um, it would take a really long time for it to look how I want it to. This is basically just too new of a bike but we really don't get that many around these ways um, and down here in New Zealand. So we're just going to be stripping the bike and adding our own patina. You can do this many different ways. Um, I normally scuff the paint up and then put paint strip on. But as it turns out, this paint's not very good, so just paint stripper alone gets through it like in one go. Some of the bikes that I strip, um, they do need a few coats of paint stripper but it really just depends on the quality of the paint job the gt force that i did that took such a long time like the clear coat came off in one go and then the color and then the primer that that was a time consuming bike but this one with the terrible paint job that it has um, yeah it's pretty easy to strip so i am going to want to keep some color on the bike so the front half or the front little portion here i want some cream and then from probably about here onwards i want some patina so i think i'll have like a bit of a color as well as the patina but i, I don't notice yet so you, there are a couple of different paint strippers one of them it doesn't peel the paint like this it just softens it and then you scrape it off but I like the look of this one, and this one, it seems to work a bit better as well. But I think just the enjoyment of it, like, all peeling up like that looks really cool. And the dropouts and stuff, I use, just use a wire brush. It just makes faster work of things. These dropouts look awful. They're just, like, stamped ones, but they've had no finished work. So I don't want the bike completely stripped. Um, it would be nice to have some like little spots that um, will sort of look like warm paint. So I'm going to leave a few little bits and bobs here and there. And then the decal we're just going to leave as is. And this tarnished little part. So I'm going to leave bits like this. Um, that's just how I want the bike. So I've put on some cream paint at the front here. I just loosely masked off the head tube sticker. Then this is the color that I found that I think would look pretty cool with the rust. Reds and oranges and that sort of color I think look really good against the brown of rust. But just sort of go with whatever you want. Here I'm just using some turpentine to rough off that paint that I just put on. This is just a tie lever inside the rag. Then I just sort of score some lines in it. Just doing this like completely <laughs> randomly. I've done this method before, um, so I sort of have like a bit of an idea of how I want it to, to look and how to do it. But just 
try different things and see how it goes. I've just been adding paint and subtracting paint just with turpentine and stuff and just keep going as is. And then after that, I'll strip everything off from behind, like where I want the patina. And then I'll add the rust solution. So here, yeah, just using some turpentine just to make sure that there's no paint there. Because if there's paint there, then it won't rust. And here, this is Loco Joe's solution that I've mixed up into the spray bottle and just spraying it on. By the time I've sprayed the other side of the bike, it's actually already started rusting. So quick. So this is it just within a couple of minutes of spraying the solution on. You can see it's quite orange, but over time it sort of darkens and turns more brown. Be a couple of minutes, it looks like this. And then after about an hour or so, it started to look a bit more like this. That's really cool. That's, that's crazy how it, how it changes so quick like that. And this is it the next day after about 24 hours. You can see here it's darkened up quite a bit. I did add a little bit of paint here and then on the bottom bracket and stuff. This isn't the final look that I want, but this is a good start. So from here, I can add some color over the top and then um, fade that and take some of that off with some turpentine again. And that can bring through that rust that's underneath. So I'm not really going <laughs> um, evenly at all. I'm just sort of going how I think it, I want it to look. So a little bit of paint there, a little bit of paint over here then dab it down a bit, it will take off like some of the paint and it won't make it look like super uniform and yeah, that's it as is that's pretty much how I want it but it's not how I want the texture to be so just a bit of turpentine just dabbed on a bit changes it up a bit as well and then taking off some of it over here and yeah, adding some. I didn't want it to look too uneven, but yeah, wasn't too fussed about it. And that's how the rear end looked. And then I changed up the seat tube. And I wanted like a little bit of darkness, sort of on the top tube and stuff. So I added just some black. Good old matte black, just chucked that on. And then wiped down from there. So I was going to leave that sit, and then once it's got like the patina look that I want, I can clear coat the whole frame, but I'm just going to let it age for a couple of weeks or so. Normally I would take the cups out, but you can see I just masked around it. Because um, yeah, I don't want to mess with that weird head tube. So just greasing up the headset bearings now, putting those back in, and then chucking the fork back in. We just gave the fork some matte black. I was going to strip it, I actually started stripping it. And then I thought, what's the point? I should just black over it. And then I'll try and find another replacement fork. So just getting rid of this nub here. He's damaged so many stereo tube threads that it's just not worth having the nub. Um, so I just file it off. Next thing was to find a stem. So I sort of ran into a bit of a roadblock here because I didn't have the sort of exact stem that I was after. This is the style that I was looking for, but the ones that I had were only 21.1. This here is 21.1. And then I have another one, this black one here. But this is also 21.1. So what I'm after is like a short old BMX quill stem. 
with a 22.2 quill as well as a 22.2 bark line. And I didn't really have anything suitable. I have this, but I think this is off like some kid's bike and it's missing the quill bolt as well as a wedge. But it looks like this um, bolt will fit and then I can just use like a regular 22.2 um, stereo tube wedge. Looks like that should reach. So I thought I'd put this together and then put it in the bike and see how it sits. The bar that I'm going to be using on the bike is just an old moto bar. I've bought this same one for a couple of bikes now. This handlebar is the original one that was on the hard rock when I first just converted it. Um, I've also put this bar on the GT Slipstream, I think it was. And I've got another of the same bar that I used on something else. But yeah, bolted that in, made sure it was all tight, and then testing the handlebar on it. There was this tiny little gap here between the faceplate and the handlebar. So I thought I would try a different stem. So this is like a GT piston stem or something similar. It's not the Made in America one, so it's not worth a buttload of money, but it still looks really cool. And I can just use that with the cool stem converter. Apart from this cool stem converter, it's too long. <laughs> it just looks a bit ugly. So I can just trim this down. I use my pipe cutter. Just double check the measurements because um, you can sort of see there that I started to cut and it was, um, it was in the wrong spot but I was only one rotation around so not really a biggie so I trimmed that down and then putting the cool converter back in so you can cover up this little part this little taper part here with some spaces or something but I don't think it really distracts from anything too badly so I'm just going to leave it exposed. You can also put a bell on it sometimes. And that looks pretty cool. But not for this clunker build. There's Gary Yoda sticker there. It's come off a bit. But it still still looks pretty cool. These grips are Colt Waffle Cruiser grips. So the Cruiser grip has a bit of a thicker and sort of raised center portion to the grip. I think they really suit... The look of the bike um, and yeah they're, cru they're called cruiser grips which is pretty fitting anyway so these are the bottom bracket cups that came in the bike the american bb and this is the truvative adapter so this is about 50 new zealand dollars or probably about 30 us dollars and yeah it's basically just a bb cup that has threads in it that you can thread in a regular bottom bracket so just making sure that I've got the right side so I don't want to put um, the right side and the left side because they're not marked. Um, but obviously one has reverse threads and then the other one is regular threads. So just testing that before putting it in and checking how it all goes together because I've never used one of these before. I've had a bike with one in it before but I didn't put it in. So a bit of a learning curve. So putting some Loctite on the bolts, but because my Loctite was at the end of its life, um, I had to, yeah, shove the bolts in the bottle. So I didn't know how it was going to go together, um, but just putting a bit of grease in just to make sure it's not going to get stuck in there. Um, but it's actually really easy to use. So basically you can just push one cup in and then tap it all the way in. then once you have that cup fully in you go back to the other side and you can just push this in a little bit just sort of hand tight then when you've got one of the bolts pretty well lined up i think i screwed in this one um, two or three rotations and then i started to line up the second bolt so the second one was harder to line up than the first uh, but i just gave a, a little bit of a rotation and then it lined up perfectly A little bit tricky so it's kind of hard to get like your finger in there to to pull the bolt up um, but yeah it gets there in the end <laughs> and then 
you don't really want to use the threads at the very start of the bolt to pull the cup together. You just give it like some taps and stuff. Hey, so I was just being gentle with it. A um, but you don't want to push the bolts through. As long as you don't. So you can see here, bolts. there's a little bit of a lip from the bolt to the outer edge of yeah. the bottom bracket cup. Then once we get a few. So you want to make sure that the bolts are below that lip. Feel a bit then you just tap it down and then it tighten the bolts down, then tap it down, keep going like that. And eventually it'll be all seated up nicely. And with grease oozing out of it. From here you can pretty much just treat it like a regular bottom bracket. Just grease the threads and then throw in the bottom bracket as you would normally. It uses a 68mm shell. Um, it's actually 73mm from outside edge to outside edge. But because the face of where the bottom bracket mounts, um, it's sort of recessed a little bit. So I used a 68mm bottom bracket in there and it seemed to work perfectly. So these are the cranks that I wanted to use on the bike. I just really like the look of these. They're quite chunky looking. These are old Shimano ones and they're 104 BCD, so I can use this chainring as well. This is a 42 tooth old BMX chainring. So just taking all the old chainrings off the cranks now. Um, I forgot the number of these cranks, but they're just like old um, Acera or Altus cranks. These are 175 millimeters. They came with steel chain rings, which last a really long time. So the only thing I don't know is whether the chain ring is going to sit on the inside or the outside. So basically, I'm just going to bolt it onto the outside, put the rear wheel in, and then sort of check the chain line. And you can see here with the chain ring on the outside position, it's way too far off. And then putting it on the inside, it lined it up a bit, bit, bit better. Um, the crank isn't bolted down, so it will pull in like a little bit extra. I loosely put the chain on as well and rocked it back and forth just to make sure it's not going to pop off before bolting the chain ring down. I did have these cool colored bolts, so I alternated purple and blue on there. thought that looks pretty cool. Moving on to the wheels and tyres now, these are just the 26 inch coaster brake wheels that I've used before. It's a high stop rear hub and this is a 22 tooth cog which is pretty big but um, it should be good with the 42 tooth chain ring off road. As you can see here I've done some skids on this tyre and they need replacing so we're going to use these Maxxis ones. Just a DHR DHF just have these sitting around they're pretty aggressive so they should suit the clunker look pretty pretty tough looking tires so i mentioned earlier that we're going to be taking the bike on a group ride and the group ride is going to be on cycle paths and stuff so we don't really need the super low gearing or i don't think it would be super low 42 22 that's that's low for a cruiser but it's about average for like an off-road single speed bike. Um, anyway, it's too low for a cycle path and stuff. So I'm just going to put this 16 tooth cog on. It's basically just a circlip that holds these cogs on. They're pretty easy to change though. So you can just use a screwdriver or something. Um, I serviced these wheels pretty recently. So I don't need to change the grease or anything in them. Uh, with coaster brake wheels, you probably will be going through grease pretty often. Um, it sort of depends on how you use them. If you're just cruising around and stuff, you could go a really long time without um, replacing the grease. But if you're going to be riding in off-road and mud and water and thrashing it downhill, then th the grease is just going to fling out. <laughs> so you're going to end up repacking it. Um, yeah. Once every 
dozen rides or so or once once every couple rides if you're riding it really hard just making sure the brake works and that the, the coaster brake arm doesn't move at all make sure it's nice and snug up against the frame so we're going to be using these insanely aggressive gusset pedals they seem to be going really strong um, people probably don't like them because of how aggressive they look but uh, they suit the bike and they're going to do what I need them to do I haven't actually been attacked by these pedals um, I've got a few scars on my legs from other pedals though there's like another one down there um, but these are all from just regular flat pedals So the last few things on the bike, there's not really much to building a clunker, um, but the last few things on the bike, we're going to be changing the seat post to something a bit longer. As you might know by now, I'm pretty tall, so we're going to be using a 370mm long seat post. As well as that, we're going to be using a height right. This is basically just an old seat dropper. It's just a spring that attaches to the seat post and then to the seat post clamp. As well as that, we're going to be using a Brooks B17 saddle. I do have one of these as well, but um, just because they sort of spring in every which direction and not just straight up and down, um, you don't feel as connected to the bike as you do with the rigid seat. I really like the way that the B17 fits me as well, so we're going to be using that. So this height right that I have is the XL version, which I think is about a 4 inch, maybe it's a 3.5 inch drop. Uh, but this one is a 27.2 millimeter diameter, so we're going to have to shim it to fit this 25.4 post. And just a, a few can shims seems to help it really good. And then just moving up <laughs> the seat post and then throwing it into the frame. So when setting up a height right, you want to attach it to the seat post just loosely and then get it mounted to the bike. And then you're going to want to set the seat post at the height that you ride it at. And then once you have the seat post set at the right height, um, you'll move the spring down and stuff and get that in the right position and then tighten all the bolts up. You want to sort of compress the spring just a little bit because it, it sort of needs like a little bit of preload. Otherwise, it won't really spring back to the same spot. So you want it to have like just a tiny little bit of pre um, yeah, preload, I guess you'd call it. Just a little bit of pressure and then tighten it up. Uh, but you can just do that with your hand. Don't really have to apply too much force to it. From here, just putting on the seat. So we're just using that Brox B17. Beautiful looking seat, these. And then the last thing to do is put a bottle cage on. So I didn't actually know, and I should have checked when putting this on, but my one litre bottle that I normally use actually fouls on the top tubes of this bike. Um, but yeah, I didn't know when putting this on, so... Now it's time to go take it for a ride. Dang, it's pretty windy. I don't know if I should just walk up this. It's pretty steep and I don't want to be all completely exhausted. Yeah, we're just going to walk up it. I'll see you at the top. Almost at the start, I think. Break still work, so we're okay. <laughs> there we go. 
get up. Can't get up there. My seat's still down there. Can we? Oh, got up. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't have my feet in the right position. <laughs> I had this knee like, pretty high up. <laughs> well, it survived. I didn't hear any big crack and I'm not hearing creaking right now. Oh, I better not skid. And then the cow, it's like, yeah, you better not fucking skid. <laughs> and I did that corner again. <laughs> that cracked me up. Hey, buddy. <laughs> Seat post going up again. Okay, quick release undone. Post came up. Make sure it's straight and clamp it back down. Hey! <laughs> Height right. Where are we at? Bridal path, it looks like. I think the hub is up here. No, no, the hub is just here. Sort of balance. Kind of Express down to yeah, Tom, blah blah blah, blah. An Anaconda. I think this is right. We'll find out. picture exit only and dipper
<laughs> Cut the and that's us. Whoa. But I don't know. But I don't know. I don't really want hard. I just want the trails that I want to go to. Oh, it's a little obstacle. Drops. <laughs> oh, yeah, we're not going to ride that. What the hell? How do I get over that momentum, I guess? But where do you get the guess this line but then oh that's low or this and then momentum up over yeah I think this is going to take a couple of tries but we'll try because it's going to be hard to keep momentum as well as I was, I was think, I think I was overthinking it because trying to have the momentum and keep your pedals in the right spot on a clunker is a bit harder because you've got that slop in the engagement like this before it engages. So yeah. 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 This way to Anaconda because we want to start heading towards the exit. So we've got this trail next. I don't think it's that hard, it says it's intermediate. Um, I guess it sort of depends on how tired you are and stuff and how prepared you are, if it's going to be a hard one or not. Um, it says it's pretty fast, so it should be, should be good. Um, not really good at going up, but um, coming down on it, yeah, I should, be, I should be a bit better at that. Um, hopefully it doesn't get too muddy, but uh, we're just going to see how, see how it goes. We're kind of prepared for it. Just uh, giving myself before we start. It's a bit overgrown and stuff, so I mean we can see it plenty good, but definitely if they trim up the sides and sort of above it and stuff, um, we're going to see just how good it is, and it's really going to make it shine and make it pop. Yeah. Here goes nothing. I don't know if it's going to join up. That's the only real downside. To riding it once you get down. Oh, this is too wet. I don't know. Just a couple of puddles. on it. 
bit weird. Oh, a bit slippery. We're going up a bit here. See goes up. Okay. <laughs> had to get had to get off at that time. up to the left it looks like join us back up You're a bit of a muddy one. Two anaconda. That's where we're going. Jumping off the dick now onto Harry. See if Harry's a good ride. I've heard pretty good things. Cyclists only, blah 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 blah. My anaconda don't. Oh. <laughs> I don't know if we're going to keep it up right through this. We did. <laughs> <laughs> Bit of a road crossing. I got all jostled up, foot went down on the pedals, bike braked, I did not smack, just straight into the seat. <laughs> nope. <laughs> we are back. Ooh, it's the pre, it's the pre, it's the pre. Big, beautiful kid, I can't quite see him. He's eating some, some berries and stuff. Beautiful birds though, probably a few times bigger than your average pigeon. They get pretty big. Um, really beautiful birds, really nice greens and stuff on them. Oh, and that's the end of the trail. Sweet.
That's all for today. <laughs> So that's pretty much all for today. Uh, thanks for checking the video out. I'm really happy with the bike. <laughs> uh, it's so good to have a clunker again and like the, the traditional sort of cruiser frame look, um, especially with the patina and stuff. The bike took the ride really well. Um, yeah, I would change the gearing out if I was gonna be doing some more trails and stuff, but the 4222 seemed to work for those ones pretty well. Um, it doesn't climb that well as you'd expect from a clunker but the geometry overall feels pretty good yeah uh, three out of three would recommend definitely building up a clunker they're so easy to slap together and you can build them out of pretty much everything um, i really like the old cruiser looking frames but you can just use an old 26 inch mountain bike and build a clunker yeah go have some fun thanks for checking the video out bye You go back for the camera. <laughs> Stop without skidding. Hmm. Looks like that fell down. Not that we have a derailleur, but one of these could get jammed in someone's derailleur and be an expensive day if they don't stop for them. Not actually riding dick.